Hi everyone, welcome back to uh, PM School's YouTube channel. Uh, we have come back again with uh, one of uh, the PM School's founders, Nikunj. Hi Nikunj, how are you? Hi, hi Ganjan. Thank you for uh, talking to me. Yeah. Yeah, so we thought that uh, we've been calling a lot of guests. Why not call uh, somebody from our own uh, team and uh, ask uh, a lot of questions around uh, the hiring process, approaches and tips um, for a couple of companies that Nikunj has been uh, with. So Nikunj, uh, before everything, uh, let's just start with knowing your journey into product management. From where did you start and how did you end up in this role? So uh, my first uh, role uh, in the product team was at an early stage startup. In fact, I had interviewed there thinking that I'd be joining a startup. I was not sure I'd be working in the product team. Uh, they, they asked me to work, uh, work as a product manager and that was like uh, me uh, trying to figure what product management is uh, on the job, right? Uh, it, you could call it like an accidental uh, transition. Uh, since then, I in fact, post that uh, I've worked uh, across education, mental health, and currently, I'm working in a gaming space, space for Game 24-7. Before this, I worked uh, on uh, a haptic uh, B2B SaaS platform. So you could say all in on uh, seven years of uh, working in product management. Nice. That's, I think that's a very unconventional uh, story. And uh, back then, again, uh, back then, like even if you landed up in product management, for you to actually figure out what was expected out of you or for you to actually make a mark in that role would have been a challenge, right? So, like, did you have any such um, challenges and how did you really make your way through the role and establish yourself as a successful PM? So, uh, as an early PM, you tend to get a uh, uh, little sort of overwhelmed with the work and super difficult to prioritize what's more important, right? Uh, it's good to have, like, a good mentor. In fact, uh, I think uh, the first uh, head of product that I worked under was like super calm and uh, what do you call, uh, super approachable to, to be very honest. And he helped me grow into uh, my skin, right? I, I would say it depends on the kind of mentoring you get at the start, especially if you're starting out. Or even if you are an aspirant, try to uh, look for a mentor, someone's already who's maybe an alumnus to you, say if you're coming out of college and you'll know some seniors who are, have been product, in product management, right? Try to connect to them and try to build that relationship wherein you can reach out to them. Or, and today I, I have like three or four guys, so people who are like eight or nine years senior to me whom I go to whenever I'm sort of struggling with career priorities or in general in my day to day. Right, that's a very fair point actually. And uh, uh, which is why now we have a lot of avenues like our own channel and our own uh, community and now there are many product communities so I think now is the right time for any product management aspirant to leverage this um, channel and uh, actually try to connect with as many PMs as one can even after you land up a PM role uh, the networking shouldn't stop because the kind of problems that different product managers solve are different and the kind of learnings that come up from that is also very different right so yeah, very fair point. So now uh, shifting gears a bit, would you like to share how did you really firstly find out about the role and then how did you approach the preparation part of it? I had uh, given an interview there. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll obviously tell you about the different sort of rounds I had gone through. Uh, initially, when you're preparing for a company, right, the sanity is you knowing as much about uh, the role, the team that you'll be working on. Try to speak to the HR and if the HR can really sort of give you some dossier or some information on what is the uh, North Star for them in the coming quarter. A lot of times we as applicants tend to think of, hey, there's a role and I've got the JD and that's it, right? You, uh, you have to be curious to really know the ends of it. Maybe you can get some insights into what you can expect in the interviews. Uh, the HR can really help you with the panelist name and try to sort of look uh, uh, and research on their uh, work line and whatever they have done in the past, right? It gives you a sense of who they are as a person. Again, it's like an open playing field. You might or might not get something. Uh, and uh, on the other side, you can reach out to people in the company, even though you might not have friends at Gojek, right? Try to talk to people and look at the company's culture. If you just go to a Gojek's website, right? They, they have... Uh, pretty sort of structurally uh, mm -hmm. uh, highlighting three things. One is obviously data. Data is at the heart of uh, a lot of uh, product management companies, but the way uh, that a lot of engineering blogs or 
uh, productivated content that they have written as part of their website curriculum in terms of whatever Gojek releases quarter quarter. That's super interesting. And you can sort of uh, bring that as part of your narrative as you prepare for Gojek. And beyond that, uh, obviously, you knowing the certain kind of uh, fundamental cliche questions that you generally get in product management, right? An analytical question, product design first question, certain behavior questions. We, we can dive de- deep into it as you obviously talk, talk more about individual rounds. Add to that, uh, a lot of uh, companies now, what they do is that they actually also uh, are willing to share certain sample questions around. I don't know if Gojek does it, but yeah, so... Uh, if you have an interview scheduled, you can always ask uh, somebody from the company, maybe the HR or somebody from the product team to really share what kind of problems they solve. And uh, of course, LinkedIn also can be leveraged to see the kind of posts that the company uh, publishes on the channel. Um, so yeah, so then once you uh, had done your preparation part, what was the actual interview like? Uh, what were the kind of questions? What were the case types? If you remember anything around that. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, the first round I had was uh, an engineering round. I had okay. it with an engineering manager. It was more around uh, a PM solution ship with engineers and uh, talking about a lot of these uh, fundamental prioritization struggles that you'll go to as a PM, right? Uh, the person gave me certain sort of hybrid scenarios that, hey, you're planning out your roadmap. And you're having a discussion with your engineering manager and he comes to you with certain tech debt items. How will you sort of, and there are certain product level uh, uh, strategic items that you need to uh, take up first. How would you communicate to your EM that, hey, the tech debt items maybe need to deprioritize or I would uh, take another approach. Uh, another question uh, that was covered as an engineering round was more around um, when uh, as a PM you work with engineers, there, there'll be a lot of work that needs to be, sometimes you'll be able to give them a detailed requirements of certain things to be done, but there'll be times when you might not have, say, prepared a doc, right? Uh, how do you have, has there been a situation like that? It was more like a behavioral open-ended round to just to check whether I have uh, a structured way of how I share requirements, how do I work with different stakeholders in a company. Uh, then after the engineering round, there was a session with the design team. Uh, again, the design team uh, wanted to know about my process when I work with the designer. They just asked me past instances wherein I worked with a designer and uh, I, I might have sort of uh, tackled a conflict so it was more like open to me uh, tackling certain situations, right? Uh, how do you uh, sort of give direction to a designer wherein they, they've not uh, had exposure to the problem that you have come up with, right? Do you just give them a doc of sorts? How do you sort of run your design team with respect to certain quarterly initiatives? So it's, again, uh, uh, you'll have a design centric ground, you'll have an engineering centric ground. It's more about how do you work with these different stakeholders. As long as you've been in the product manager's shoes, you'll have your past anecdotal experiences that you can share. Uh, and uh, try to be as honest, because obviously as the person tries to dive deep into your experiences, it'll come out that right? if you haven't done the, the work. Uh, uh, lastly, I had an analytical round. Uh, then I had two panelists. Uh, I, I remember the question. In fact, uh, the question was around if I had recently sort of uh, launched an MVP uh, for a product, uh, which is say a competitor to Instagram, right? So what kind of a metric, uh, what, what sort of metrics would I be looking at for uh, this kind of product? Here, the critical part is obviously people will come up with different sets of uh, metrics, but uh, you need to look at breadth and depth. What I mean by that is you need to think of when you're launching an MVP, what is critical at that nascent stage of the product really working out? What is success for that product? Uh, looking at from an acquisition standpoint and really covering the core action of why the product should exist and not just uh, talking about 50,000 feet items like DAUs or engagement, but really defining the core action, right? Uh, a product like Instagram uh, is successful when the end users sort of post a lot of content and that creates like a loop of different set of uh, uh, negative sort of TG of users who goes and then consumes that infinite feed of uh, impressions, right? The core loop is what you need to define uh, why the narrative uh, metrics that you suggest, right? And when you define a metric, don't talk a uh, high level. Try to define the metric with respect to, are you talking about average values? Are you talking about ratios, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, the, the interviewer kind of prodded me to really sort of not just uh, define a magnitude or quantity value. How would you know whether a certain metric is sort of being, uh, if I'm looking at uh, metrics in a silo, because uh, as PMs, if you just define one or two metrics, you might miss out on the larger narrative of something else not working on your product. 
So as I said, breadth and depth. Uh, looking at metrics with respect to the full funnel of the journey of uh, the loop, as I said, right? People posting content and different kind of users consuming that content. And how do you define the metric uh, ratios or averages or medias? That was uh, a critical takeaway. So uh, if if you sort of summarize, right, all these uh, multiple rounds, we're trying to look at four. patently skills for a pm one is your uh, ability to work with engineers your ability to work with designers your analytical bent and product strategy when you sort of prioritize certain items over other items in a basket yeah. yeah that was a very well um, i would say like a holistic kind of an interview process that you had and uh, usually um, if you do try to uh, approach any product round with a lens of you know what would you actually do in a real world scenario then i feel it it's uh, it would yield much better results in the interview rather than just taking it as a problem to solve um, which is what happens in a lot of interviews and that's something that i've observed too yeah that was super helpful nikunj um uh, if uh, you all have any other questions about the hiring or other interesting uh, topics or any challenges that you faced you can comment below uh and uh, we will link all the details to the pm school website as well as my uh channel and you can reach out to us thanks a lot nikunj for this thank you ganjan bye bye bye